we actually designed uh, systems to make mosaics uh, more accessible. Uh, so I suppose you all know what mosaic is. Who, who's actually done some mosaic projects? Who is a mosaicist who considers themselves a it's mosaicist? Too hard to it's too hard. It's too hard. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The cost restraints and everything. Um, so mosaic mosaic has been a an art form for thousands of years and widely known for its uh, durability in the public domain. And they're still uncovering mosaics uh, to this day that are still in pretty good uh, pretty good form after being underground for thousands of years. Um, just to, to walk through a little bit of, about mosaics, since no one raised their hands. Uh, this is, these are some terms used for mosaic. Uh, opus is uh, the kind of, of um, the way the mosaics are laid uh, as far as the, the general design of the mosaic. Uh, opus vermiculatum, the, the mosaics are, are laid kind of in a a worm-like fashion, uh, flowing. Opus pallid pallidianum is a random-shaped tessera uh, laid in, in a random manner. Um, the tessera is the name of a tile, the, the proper term for, for tile within a mosaic. And the join line is the space between the mosaics, which is also the group where the grout goes, the grout lines. And uh, onamento is the visual flow of the, the mosaic, as you can see this. This has the, the flow going that way. Um, what we focus on right now is opus regulatum, which is uh, row column um, grid mosaic. And then there's opus tessellatum, which is uh, kind of brick laid mosaic. Um, these are some of the projects we've, we've completed. Um, we're, we're based down in uh, the Marine Industrial Park of Boston, where we've got a, a small studio. Um, where we've got about four full-time employees and about four, four part-time employees. Melinda uh, did some part-time work for us uh, running production. We hire a bunch of uh, local artists who, who need some, some paying work, as, as you said in the back, to, to produce these, these art pieces instead of getting them produced for them. Um, so we've got a good group of people uh, in our studio some of whom uh, work in the, the artisan asylum doing uh, classes and that sort of thing. Um, so what we do is we marry technology with the ancient art form, kind of bringing it to, to the, the modern day. Um, we developed our own software that will take any image and reproduce it into mosaic. Um, so if you're a, a painter or a photographer uh, and can't really break into the, the public uh, art scene because of durability problems or um, you can't rep reproduce it in such a large scale that needs to be uh, in the public realm. Um, we, we developed the tools for that. Uh, and then our software couples with our robotic manufacturing. We're actually an MIT spin-out company um, that uh, our founder um, and myself I didn't go to MIT. Our founder went to MIT. Who, we designed the mechanical systems. I uh, came in more on the art end. I'm, I'm uh, more the, the artsy dreamer. <laughs> and uh, and I, I worked with the software and, and helped develop that. I'm going to walk through one of the projects we, we recently um, completed for MIT at the uh, new Koch Institute for, for Integrative uh, Cancer Research. <clears throat> this was done. Uh, out of half inch unglazed porcelain. It's a 330 square foot mosaic um, for the floor of the entryway. This was actually a, a really cool project that we did that uh, we just happened upon because um, we gave a tour of our facility to someone uh, who worked at a local architecture firm and the, uh, the designer was pretty near the grand opening of, of this. It was a um, a gallery sort of area in the front of the, the cancer center, kind of a museum area. And their mosaic fabricator fell through at the last minute. And it was at kind of the, the 11th hour, and they needed this, this uh, primary piece. The door entryway is right there. So they needed this fabricated 
in uh, very little time. And someone who had, and the, the uh, lead designer said, does anyone know of any mosa mosaicists or people that can produce this for us in such little time? And, and one of the people at his firm said, yeah, uh, one of my friends just, just uh, took a tour of this facility in Boston, MIT spin-out company, um, and said it was really cool that they should check it out. And, and he came the next day, and we all we pieced it all together. Uh, so this is our software up here on the left um, called Tessera, which, like I said, is the name of each individual tile of, of a mosaic. Uh, right now, this is kind of an early um, software. We're, we're four, four years old, uh, so a, a startup company. Um, so we're actually developing several new softwares that I'll get into later, but um, right now this is just Mac-based, and we give it out freely to, to artists and, and anyone who wants to, to design their own mosaics. So first we upload our, an image, which can be any digital, digital file. Um, this was the, the map that the designer gave us that he had come up with. Um, and that's the, the Koch Center there and all the other MIT buildings and um, biotech buildings in Kendall Square area. So we uploaded that into our software. Then we picked the, the tile material. We've got um, a bunch of different materials that we, we choose from, whether it's a, a vitreous glass, um, prism glass, we've got marble, natural stone, um, porcelain, unglazed and unglazed porcelain. And, uh, but he was looking for a, a real matte finish and durable because it was right in the entryway. So we, we worked with him to, to find the, the best uh, finish and best tile for the, the application, which was the unglazed porcelain, which is really durable and <coughs> can withstand commercial traffic on, on the floor. Um, and that's the cool thing about mosaic, whether it's on the wall or on the floor, that it's, it's really durable and, and can, can hold up to, to Boston salt and all that crap going, going on it. Uh, and then we put in the dimensions of the, uh, the project as well as the tile that we chose. Uh, so he, he provided us with the dimensions of the space and we got as built uh, measurements as well to make it fit precisely to the space. And then we developed a couple different matching algorithms on how it, it matches the tile with the mosaic, or with the input image. So it breaks it down into the grid and does average matching of the spaces. Um, and this one was very vector-based and, and sharp edges, so we use the, the center-weighted sharp algorithm um, it takes a little playing with to, to know what the, the algorithms do with it, but um, yeah, it was, uh, and that's the, um, the output it came out with. And as you can see, there's a little aliasing on the sides, and we actually went through and, and created a, a custom palette for the mosaic. Um, so we picked out all the exact colors we wanted in, in the piece and only used those within it. Um, so this is a video. So we were having technical issues with this, but I think it's right here. So we developed our software so it works hand in hand with Photoshop so that we can actually go in and change tile by tile. We don't want the computer to do uh, the primary design of the mosaic. So we can go in and and swap out different colors, and then run it through our software again, and it gives us the, uh, the tile counts and how, how many we use, and then we can order it from our, our manufacturer if we, have, uh, if we don't have it in inventory. Who's the manufacturer? Um, we've, we've got manufacturers all over the, the globe. Um, we so, so, um, uh, I guess, so the question, um, for this project, it was ceramic. Okay, so it's all different. Can you glass the ceramic? Exactly. The, the ceramic was actually made in Arkansas. Um, and we get glass, some glasses from Italy, 
um, India, uh, we've got some other uh, American manufacturers. So we get it from, what's that? Uh, it, it varies depending on the um, uh, I'm not exactly sure. Um, because it was a, a brush order. Can you give me a range? The, the half inch unglazed porcelain, I think it's around $70 a square foot. Um, for the glass, it's a little more. Uh, for one inch porcelain, which I'll, I'll show you a project with later, it's, it's down around like $30. Um, but don't, don't take my word for these numbers. I'm, I'm just the, the, the designer. I, I don't get into that sort of stuff. <laughs> I try not to, at least. Um, so that's the design process. And then we have the robotic system where we order the, mo order the tile in bulk, in poundage, dump it into a vibratory, vibratory bowl. It flips them all right side up. And then we have inspection that inspects the, the tiles as they go down a conveyor belt. And then it gets fed to a robot. Sorry, this is a little quick. Um, and then the, the robot picks and places individual tiles to create square foot sections that are then labeled and boxed up and, and shipped to site. So this is one of the sheets of a, of a mosaic. Um, on it, we have the section label, this side up, row column. Uh, Can you pass it around? Yeah. What are you using as the, the your substrate? It's a, a polymer plastic tape. Um, and, but we, there's various other materials you can use, whether it's, uh, what is it, uh, brown paper. Um, but we like, we like the, the plastic because you can see it and you can lay it out and, and see if there's any uh, bad tiles or, or anything out, out of line. And the plastic is on the top side. Right. So with that, you, uh, let's go back. Mm -hmm. So there's the installation going on. Um, so that's coupled with an installation diagram that shows where each section is um, with all the labels. Yep. To get it to look right, do they have to carefully crowd different colors, or do they just kind of pick something neutral and just go across the whole thing? It, it varies depending on the mosaic. This one, they, they picked a neutral and, and went across the whole thing. Um, that's usually what happens because uh, it costs a lot to, to get them to, to carefully pick out. And even then, it doesn't, doesn't come out exactly right. Um, but keep pick, picking a nice neutral tone that really blends it all together is, is a, a good way to go about it. Whether it's a dark mosaic, you use a dark uh, tone ground, or light mosaic, use light tone. Um, so yeah, the sheet that's going around, the, the tape is on the front. And it gets laid into the, the mortar. And then once it dries, it, the tape is peeled off and it's grouted. Um, just like any other tile installation, except you follow a map. So any, any tile installer can, can install this. Uh, they don't need to be extremely skilled labor. They, just any tile installer. But there are some that are better than others. <laughs> and we, we know who those are, so we can, we can navigate you through that. Um, and there's the, the finished product. Is that a lot of less expensive than Toronto? Um, it's, it's right around the same cost. Uh, the thing with Toronto, it, it yellows over time. And, um, is not as, you can't really do as much with it as, as with the mosaic because you have to stick to, to big swaths. Um, and it's not color fast. So with UV light, um, it, it dampens over time or fades over time. And all, all our tiles are color fast. They're through body glass and through body porcelain. This is one we just finished at Legal Seafoods near Harborside. Uh, and it's uh, using 3 8 um, vitreous glass, which for all, all our main tile lines, we, 
we have the uh, every every color that we have available displayed like this. So we can you can pick out what color specifically you want in your project, um, and we can only we can use just those in our in our software. <coughs> So this is 268 square feet. I, I like to put the no, uh, number of tiles, yeah. which is the number of uh, placements the robot does, which is uh, a little over 200,000. Um, we did this in, uh, I think it was about five days to, to produce. But we ran shifts overnight because um, they, were, they were, again, last minute grand opening. We thought we weren't in the project. And, and then they said, oh yeah, the CEO really wants it. Um, we weren't going to put it in, but the CEO said, where's my mosaic? And so, so we, we did uh, all-nighters to, to finish it. Do you guys do the installation too? I wasn't sure about that. Do you have someone else install it, or do you, are, you doing, are you doing everything? We, we don't install it. We try not to install it. We have done an installation, but that's, that's not where our value is. There's, there's people who do that and do it better than us. And the, uh, they were installing, it was a new build, so there was tile installers on site anyway, doing the tile in the bathroom and the kitchen. Um, and they just jumped on this project and did it in two days. Um, that, when you say creates um, Vitri's class, does that mean that, but, I mean, you, you're working in a grid of pixel size. Mm -hmm. is, it, is that a 3 8 inch pixel size? Right. It's a 3 8 inch uh, glass tile. Is that the smallest uh, pixel size, or there, you know, what was half inch? Or, or yeah, 3 8 is the, the smallest that we focus three on. Is the smallest, yeah. Um, there's, there's not that many smaller, uh, smaller, smaller yeah. than it. Uh, we're not making it's our own tiles, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that, and then what, that, what about what's. Uh, we go up to one inch. Anything bigger than that, it's really not worth it for us to do it, uh, yeah. assemble it by robot, yeah. because um, the time you spend assembling it by hand is about the same at that point, or at like two inches. Um, so yeah, this was a recreation of, a, let's see, the painting hanging over the, the CEO's uh, desk. And we- Who's the artist? Forget the artist. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have looked at it. Uh, but we, we kind of re recreated it and stretched it to fit the space and repeated some of the sections. And, and that's the, the final one there. This was a, um, one we did in East Boston. This was a collaboration with uh, some school kids, um, uh, Schneider, Schneider Studios, came up with the, the design of the, the bench. But then it creates a, a map for people to but assemble people it by hand. So or they send it off to China and yeah, get yeah. a bunch of them. Yeah. But that, that, again, that's the, the lead time thing as well. They, they wouldn't have been able to compete with those projects I was talking about where um, they wanted it the next day. Question here? The sorting aspect of this is kind of interesting too. I mean, can I go to the world and collect thousands of periwinkles that are all about the same size and bring them into you and have them sorted into the right color and then placed into a grid and make tiles out of them? Kind of um, we, we don't sort by color yet. Uh, we're working on a, a camera system that will. Um, but uh, the, the sorting is, it, it, it's done on color to color basis right. where it flips right. it. And, right. What's that? You're, being, you're putting them in things of color beforehand and right. having them be inspected, but could you tell if there was a whole area of color and throw that for that kind of thing? Uh, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's so hard with the, the irregular material <coughs> because um, that'll lead to, to jams in the system and and uh, any, anything that, that goes outside the, the certain spec that we have for the tile will not fit down our, our tubing system or, or get stuck in the, the system. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay.
Thank you all.